I am your host with the most local 23 and you're joining me for the 2019 nominees for the Game Awards. Just to let you know that this is a uh, pretty much a jury selected from the likes of Polygon all the way to ESPN that put these games on this list and uh, some of them I disagree with especially the fact that uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield as well as Star Wars Fallen Order are not on this list whatsoever and um, they specifically had access to those games well in advance as well as I the consumer who have now a ability to vote have uh, had access to those games for almost a week now and uh, long story short I think it's very cock out to throw it into 2020 where it's going to go against the likes of Cyberpunk 2016. 77, um, you know, The Last of Us Part 2, Final Fantasy 7, and there is over a half a dozen more games that are spectacular for this list, and Pokemon Shield and Sword as well as Fallen Order are going to be very bleak um, as well as a whisper compared to those games. So, without further ado, Game of the Year! Recognize a game that delivers absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. Control was alright. It's a game that is in and of itself niche it's it, it had a lot of issues too it's something that what i call it game of the year no uh death stranding it's a very niche as well a game um no issues whatsoever that i've seen however it is very enjoyable but also very niche a lot of people have wanted just very straightforward reviews Death Stranding is a game where you're going to have to either sit down and play it or not. You're going to have to sit down and watch the gameplay or not. It's just something that is very aesthetically beautiful. The gameplay is enjoyable at times. The story's well done, whatnot. But it's just, it's very niche. Um, Resident Evil 2, give me a break. It's a remake. It's not bad. But it's not Game of the Year material. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Spectacular game, by the way. And shout out to my friend Bunty King, who... Pretty much, I had never touched a Dark Souls-esque game ever. I kind of, watching other people that I subscribe to or follow, I kind of just raised my nose up at as, you know, a game that was, like, not worthy of me. And it was just, they they kind of didn't, they either failed too much or they didn't have fun with it or, or, or whatnot. Um, so it was one of, it, for Dark Souls-esque games, it was just one of those genres that I just didn't want to touch until watching him. Um, and it was something that I really watched intently. I watched, you know, you also looking outside of watching his content, the memes, the whole nine yards, um, and then all the fun, as well as a little bit of controversy about the easy mode, but it was something that I really did enjoy. So before casting, we'll move on, but probably already hinted what I'm going to vote on. Um, Super Smash Bros. No, thank you. Like, while that's a good game and a nice genre and all that, it's okay. It's just not Game of the Year material. I'm sorry. Outer Worlds? It was alright! It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed the choices-based things. I enjoyed the Fallout-esque. I, I enjoyed... It was a hell of a lot better than Fallout 76, let me put it that way. And, uh, it was just all around pretty good. Um, Game of the Year material, it had a beautiful atmosphere. It had everything that, that Death Stranding had. Um, but for Outer Worlds, they, I have to say, if you were to put them both against one another, that would be a really hard vote. But, um, long story short, does it deserve Game of the Year? Sorry. I'm gonna go to Sekiro. Like, it was a lot of fun. It was a, it was a lot of fun, that game. Um, action game. For the best in-game action genre focused primarily on combat. Apex, duh. Um, Astral Chain, I have heard just whispers of um call of duty give me a break i <laughs> like no offense no uh devil may cry 5 was actually really good um for action as well as whatnot but it wasn't one of those games that really stood out to me it was fun but it just wasn't something that really stood out to you uh gears 5 is another game that went on a whisper it came it went and it was gone uh metro exodus was a deep personal favorite of mine as a person who has loved the Metro franchise, Artum, let's go! Let's go now! As much fun as I want to put on Action Game, which is really weird that it wasn't even listed for Game of the Year, um, which is kind of like a uh, move, in my opinion. It would have been a nice contestant up here versus, like, Resident Evil 2 or Smash Bros. Um... Metro Exodus would have been a hard one because it was a beautiful game for me. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the graphics of it and the whole nine yards. I think the problem why it isn't on the list is because of the whole Epic Games 
drama and crap, which, get over it, really. At this point, we have a rock star, you know, in, like, on desktop store now and everything else. Get over it. Um, especially when, you know, Apex, Fortnite, you know, all these other things have their own storefronts, and then Fortnite being one of the biggest. Get over it. Long story short, who do I vote for? When it comes to action games out of this list, it's gonna be Apex, hands down. It is the very epitome of action games. Um, it's something that is primarily focused on combat, winning the whole nine yards. It's funny not to see Fortnite on that list. Next is action adventure game. What? I'm sorry, I have to laugh. I have to smile at that. Finally, Fortnite's off the list. For the best action adventure game, combining combat with traversal and puzzle solving, Borderlands 3 does not hit me as anything like that. It's a goofy, meme-worthy, went-gone-in-a-whisper, had a ton of controversy about it game that uh, Borderlands 3 just did not deliver. Borderlands 1 and 2 barely delivered for me, and Borderlands 2 I just couldn't get through because it was just meh to me. And I'm still going to keep trying to go back, but long story short, it was just very meh to me. And then all the controversy around it and everything, and then suppressing content creators and everything about that. Borderlands 3 really failed, and really does not deserve a video on that list, especially with the puzzle solving. Come on, it's Borderlands 3. When has Borderlands ever had a puzzle? Seriously. Like, really. Control. Control was alright in that direction. Um... I'd have to say it kind of did kind of have like a well-rounded to this kind of category, but does it deserve it? Not with the issues it had. Death Stranding, not so much puzzle solving, though there are, you know, which way do you go kind of like ways, or which do you do, or things like that, or how to take down your opponents, things like that. Kind of puzzle solving, but really not the action, adventure, just one and done, uh, really. Uh, Resident Evil 2, give me a break. Um, the Legend of Zelda, really, I feel like on this list, while Sekiro's on here and it does do action and adventure, it just doesn't really have puzzle solving, in my opinion. Um, versus Legend of Zelda, it's just a combination of all of it well-balanced for the most part and really had no issues and has been a kind of fun, adorable game that didn't go out with a whisper like a lot of these other games on the list did and also didn't have controversy surrounding it. So I'm going to also go with that. That is really something that is coming up a lot lately. It's, it's just controversy around games. It seems like gaming used to be just a, an enjoyable thing, and now there's controversy everywhere you look. Ugh. Um, art direction. For outstanding creative and technical achievement in artistic design and animation control, no. Riss. Yeah, it's all right. Um, say we're in a wild heart. No. Sekiro. It, it, had, it had nice aesthetics. It really did. Um, right now, it's a battle for me personally between um, art direction for, you know, aesthetics, design, you know, just really enjoyable things. Legend of Zelda really set the, the, the mold, though, because it was completely different looking, um, which in a way is the art direction that you want to give it. It's a cute, adorable game. It looks nothing like that came out this year. I think maybe one other one, which was from an indie developer, which hasn't really got any praise that it should have. Um, it, it, it just, it just, I believe for art direction and why not, Legend of Zelda takes it. Um, audio design, recognition, best in-game audio and sound design. Call of Duty, give me a break. Half your guns don't even sound the right way. Yes, there. <laughs> There is a difference between gun sounds. There's a difference between shooting a shotgun and shooting an M4 and shooting a 9mm. Call of Duty couldn't seem to figure that out. Um, Control. Eh, it was up there, but... No, Gears 5, no, Resident Evil 2, give me a break. Sekiro and, and Death. It's really a battle between these two titans right now. Um, That's why... I disagree with Game of the Year. Um, I believe more games should be on that list, not less. I believe there should be up to a good eight to a dozen games on the Game of the Year. I don't think it should ever be less than five or six. I really don't, especially when you've had... This game hasn't been a spectacular year, but it hasn't been a bad year for gaming either. Um, Death Stranding has wonderful audio. 
you know with sounds and it's really key to sounds and visuals and things like that for you know just as a summation of everything around you um sekiro in-game audio was spectacular though i i'm really fighting it i'm really fighting it back and forth right now um sekiro like the perfect moment that i can remember was oh and a lot of people, it was one of the biggest memes. It was one of the biggest funny moments for what, what was happening in Sekiro. Because you heard this, oh, and you're looking around like, what the f*** is going on? Where? What? And then just, bam! You know? You just, some people saw it coming, some people didn't. And it was just like, what the hell? Like, that was amazing and yet everything. I feel like that's what's going to set Death Stranding apart from Sekiro here. So I'm going to have to go with Sekiro. Community support, recognition, and game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. Destiny 2. <laughs> Notice how I skipped Apex. Final Fantasy 14. It's 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 had a decent community. It's had decent support, but Rainbow Six Siege. No, I'm sorry. No. You already know my personal gripes with Ubisoft, but looking at specifically the game, no. If that community ever could get its stuff together, I would be really surprised. Um, Fortnite versus Apex, the two Battle Royale Titans this year. See, the thing is, is a lot of people think that Fortnite is really successful because it's a really successful and fantastic game. And while it is, it's also because it's very kid-friendly. It's very kid-friendly versus what a lot of creators and whatnot try and get out on Apex. They are not able to get it out there as much because of the parental thing, the new federal standards, the rating system, the violence and whatnot. Apex has been kind of suppressed versus Fortnite is very, very kid friendly. It's something that you can still upload to YouTube, put it on kids mode, and you will never break a, a, a rule unless the government, which has been really, really, and this is what I'm talking about with support, is a lot of support talk about community support you've had more community support with apex versus fortnite um fortnite is just to me it, it's it's kind of lacked a little here and there but i'm gonna have to go with apex on this one um via what i've seen what i've heard you know there is a little bit of transparency listening the whole nine yards content creator of the year Hey, look, I'm on the... No. For the streamer content creator who has uh, made an important and positive impact on the industry in 2019, which I can't believe I'm about to say this, but where is Mr. Beast? Where is Ninja? Where is Markiplier? Where is Jacksepticeye? Ninja, you guys know I've never been a huge, huge fan of, but really? Like, Ninja made a huge, like, one, any game Ninja plays, it's, it's a impact on the industry, especially a positive impact on the industry. I hate to say it, even though I don't see eye to eye with the guy, but it, it is, he's, a, he's someone who at least should have his name up here. Um, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, fundraisers, charities, any game they play is, 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 you know, well received and looked at and, and whatnot and the way they handle it. And it's just weird. It's just really weird. Um, <laughs> even PewDiePie, you, you like courage. I know a little of through like you know, the changes recently and, and YouTube and whatnot, but Courage I've seen little to nigh horror, you know, hair of. Dr. Lupo uh, is a guy I watch, I follow. And um, Ewok is someone who don't even know. The only way I know of Ewok is because suddenly he showed up on Mixer and he was making the move, which, okay, um... Graf G, I have zero clue about. These are people who, especially as someone who works in the industry, let alone someone who is a content creator, a streamer, and whatnot. There are three people on this list, two of which I have zero clue about. 
just because they have a somewhat decent following, I'm kind of sitting here going, there are other people who made important and positive impacts in the industry in 2019. Shroud? I mean, he, he's up there. You know of him, at least in certain scenes. Not every scene, but you do know of him. Dr. Lupo, for me, is someone who's more well-known. Um... Trout is a guy who I've killed in Apex more times than I care to count. <laughs> Him and Dizzy. But anyway, <laughs> I got Ninja once. Moving on. I. There's one thing. There's one thing. That's going to change my mind here. And it's Shroud. And his comment. Where it was. Him talking about Ninja. And praising him, but at the same time saying he would not leave Twitch. In the same in the same bubble, same video, same everything. And lo and behold, shortly after that, he went to Mixer. Um Dr. Lupo makes a lot of good stuff. It's it's entertaining, it's fun. And he has made some positive impact. Like, something tells me that most likely, because being in this industry, as well as being a creator, something tells me either Courage or Shroud will win this. Um, especially Shroud being one of the biggest names here on this list. In, for, for again, the niches, the things that I surround, um, or float around. It's just someone where if you think Ninja, you think Shroud. You think Dizzy, you think Shroud. You think this, you think Shroud. It's He's kind of like the, the, I guess, sidekick or in a way, or showcaser. You know, kind of like the showrunner, announcer, things like that. It, it's just someone that you think of, and then, you know, you think of someone, then you think of. You, they're just associated with a lot of big names. However, that does not make an important or positive impact on in the industry. Um, again, if Mr. Beast, if, if Mark Plyer, Jack Septicar would be on here, this would be a really hard, tough decision. Um, I don't know if this is like a one and done, because there's a lot of other content creators on here that, sh that, that I, or, or should be on here that have made dramatic, huge impacts on the industry that should be on here that are even smaller followings. And I guess it, I guess you have to hit that big following to be recognized as a content creator. Um, but in, without further ado, Dr. Lupo wins this one. Um... Esport coaches. I'm going to have to go with Kane. I'm going to have to go with Kane. Team Liquid has always been up there. Um, yeah. I'm feeling confident with Kane, though, um, even against his counterpart, um, Eric. I, I'm going to go with Kane. Like, I look at a lot of these other people, and they just don't grab me. Esports event. Overwatch is a no thank you. Um, how badly the Overwatch uh, players got treated this year. How badly bl the BlizzCon thing was. How ba no, I'm I'm just no, no. Um, the deliver best in class experience for participants. No, which is huge. How badly the Blizzard treated their Overwatch people, like in the big drama that was around it, and how then our Hearthstone and everything. No, no, it's all flooding. Blizzard this year has been covered in controversy. Um, Evo, Fortnite. I, 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 these, I have heard no real negatives. However, the way they get traded, because again, you're dealing with participants, in-person fans, and broadcast audience. I feel like, not judging the game, I feel like Fortnite is, is just, they treat their, their people a lot better. Esports game of the year. No Overwatch. No, I'm serious. I'm not even going to look at it. The game for that delivered the best overall esports experience to players, um, inclusive in tournaments, community support, content updates, and um, irrespective of genre or platform. 
I mean, Fortnite had their big unveil. They delivered a bunch of new content. They always deliver new things. League of Legends. Overwatch, give me a break. The Dota 2. Um, CS Go. I'm going to have to go with Fortnite. Okay. Um, esports hosts. Oh, it's kind of like me doing a host. Hi. Um, the best host or commentator for esports events, both in a venue or broadcast in 2019. This one's a hard one. Um, because some of these guys. <sighs> I know two, and the rest I've never seen or nor care of. So this is one's a very tough one. Um, I think I'm going to hold out my vote on this one because even though my vote doesn't really go for, I how about this? How about this? We'll go off a of charisma. We'll go off what I'm seeing. How about this? And then you guys can comment down below if I'm right or wrong or what you think, if you want. So uh, FG. Seems okay. Alex, or charismatic. Paul, you look grumpy a little. You look like a, you look a little grumpy. Alex looks like he would, uh, he's good at giving a couple puns or jokes and then moving on or taking them. Uh, Candace, she looks very more charismatic. She looks happier. Um, I'm just going off of charisma. What I'm what I'm seeing. I'm gonna go with Alex. Esports player. Crap. To be judged the most outstanding for their performance and conduct in 2019, irrespective of the game. I bet you could put the guy up from Hearthstone that said free Hong Kong. Moving on! I guarantee you that guy'd win. I'm bouncing between Overwatch and Fortnite. Um, those are the th two that I know. The other three... I've kind of fallen out with League of Legends. I haven't played League of Legends in a while. I stopped following League of Legends. League of Legends is just kind of snooze fest anymore to me. CSGO at least is somewhat okay. Um, Olex. My buddy Olex is right now shaking his head. He's going, why? Why do you forsake me, friend? And I'm going, because my friend. It's just not, not the cream of the crop anymore for me. I'm gonna go with Kyle. Esports team. Well, I already know I have to go with this one, unfortunately. Um. <sighs> because I support them, regardless of what outstanding performance and conduct, which. Team Liquid. Family game. The uh, best game appropriate for family play, irrespective of genre or platform. Ring Fit Adventure. I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's a family-esque game, but it doesn't allow family play. Which is really interesting. <laughs> Legend of Zelda is not on this list. Mario Maker is a little bit fun. Um, Super Smash Bros. is one that is inclusive to your family. One person grabs one controller, one person grabs the other one. It is something that I would say is is for family game, family play. Um, Yoshi's Crafted World is one that's okay, and Luigi's Mansion 3 is a good Nintendo game. However, for family play, if you want to have a person sit down with you and play the game, I am going to have to go with Super Smash Bros. Fighting game.
Dead or Alive, give me a break. The only reason that game is even on here is because of the plot. Jump Force, no. No. What is one of the worst crafted fighting games this year? Let alone, no. Mortal Kombat 11. Surprisingly, it's just... We'll get to that in a minute. Hold on. Samurai Showdown, no. Super Smash Bros. It's a fighting game. It's a lot of fun. There's DLCs uh, for more fighters. There's things like that. So right now, it's, it's a fight between Mortal Kombat and Super Smash. Mortal Kombat had a lot of good fighting. Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, taking apart... A, a that the fact that it doesn't get out as much as it should, because we are still suppressing Mortal Kombat to this day, um, and that the fact that there's because there's violence, poof, YouTube slams it, you know, other platforms slam, and it's 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 a video game with violence. It's it's meant to have violence. It's 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 a gaming thing. Um, I just it it just has not got out there because it's just not something that's suggested for gameplay or whatnot. Mortal Kombat, seriously, look into it. Um, I think it was Matt Pat and Game Theories did a did a big thing about it. How just Mortal Kombat went with a whisper because of of just how the industry is kind of so and media and whatnot is so against Mortal Kombat just because of it being Mortal Kombat. It's it's weird. It's weird. Um, Super Smash Bros has always been fun combat though. Regardless, taking apart the taking aside the controversy and everything, right now this is a battle between Mortal Kombat 11 and Super Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. has always been a fun game. Super Smash Bros., though, is one of those games that really gets out there and gets fun and whatnot, and it's not suppressed a lot by media and as well as the industry. What a comment. It literally is the epitome and the, and, 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 the, and the essence of a fighting game. Fresh indie game! Zaum. Chris. My friend Pedro, Outer Wilds, Play the Spire, or the Entitled Goose Game. The Entitled Game Goose Game. A lot of memes came out of that. Um, Slay the Spire. I'm going to go with Outer Worlds. Game Direction Award for Outstanding Creative Vision and Innovation in Game Direction and Design. Resident Evil 2 should not win a single award this year. I'm just saying. It didn't do anything different. It rebrought Resident Evil 2 back to current standards and innovation. Uh, it didn't change anything. It didn't go in any specific way. It went the way Resident Evil 2 was supposed to go. So again, it doesn't feel like it deserves this list. Outer Worlds deserves this list more than this. Um, Sekiro did do creative vision did do innovation but it didn't excel out of its out of its mind it didn't it didn't change much there was a lot there was you know there several things that were approved upon or a little bit of innovation a little bit of creative vision but all in all i just <sighs> now death stranding is ups deliver it's interesting it's 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 creative vision it definitely is something that's new for several aspects, um, especially the BTs and the and the BB and 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 it's definitely got some creative vision. It's got some innovation. Definitely got it, but so does in Control. Now this is at least where I can say Control is might take this one. So this is going to be a side glance. Just just what am I going with right now? It's between Death Stranding and Control. I'm going to take a drink. Okay. Noni. Death Stranding. Games for Impact. For thought-provoking game with social me, um, uh, pro-social meaning or message. Life is Strange. Hi. Ugh, thought-provoking is not what Life is Strange 2 did. I'm sorry. Life is Strange 2 has not been thought-provoking. 
Life is Strange 2 has become more Telltale games. Um, it has failed me epically. Li uh, Life is Strange 1, as well as Before the Storm, were both could definitely get the votes for right now. If you were just to throw them up, they would get the votes for me for thought-provoking game with a pro-social meaning or message. I'm sorry. This is hard to vote on because the whole message for Life is Strange 2 has been anything but pro-social. It literally has been nothing but pro-social. Like, seriously, go play the game or watch the videos on my channel. I'm gonna go with kind words. See, a Solitude's a really good one, though. Independent game. For outstanding creative and technical achievement in game made outside the traditional publisher system. Disco? Or Outer Worlds? I'm gonna go with Outer Worlds. Really, it's a, it's a well-done game. And it's something that was outside the traditional publisher system. Technically. Technically. Untitled Goose was an okay fun game. It's just something that I don't know. Oh, mother of what? Call of Duty Mobile. No. <laughs> no. No. Okay, so long story short... What deserves the best playable on a, on a mobile device? Sky, Children of the Light. It is a fantastic game that is very beautiful. I believe that anyone and everyone should go check that out. It's a beautiful game. Multiplayer game. For outstanding online multiplayer game and play and design, including co-op, massively all multiplayer experiences, and irrespective of a game or platform. I don't even need to try this one. Borderlands, give me a break. Call of Duty, no thank you. Tom Clancy's The Division 2, no. Tetris 99, no. Apex. When playing on Apex, there have been literally no issues for me. Call of Duty is a joke. Tom Clancy's The Division, no thank you. And Borderlands 3, that's the best joke of all. Narrative, for outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. This one's going to be a tough one, but here's why. Control? No. Disco? No. Outer Worlds, everyone is voice acted. It has a wonderful uh, storytelling experience. It has a nice narrative development in the game. Um, Death Stranding is the same. However, it is ruined with, to me, in my personal opinion, storytelling and narrative wise when you are delivering packages and you go up to somebody and they're me right and then you go and you traverse this big big zone 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 okay all right and I, i'm gonna literally make a visual demonstration of this and you go up to deliver a package and it's this the only thing you've added to a person is a hat it kind of ruins my storytelling telling and narrative Element. It kind of ruins my immersion in the game. Death Stranding got that one thing wrong. Just one. Aside from that, storytelling and narrative was very interesting. Um, A Plague Tale of Innocence. While that game was fantastically done um, and enjoyable, it was also very, very short. So for uh, storytelling and narrative, I'm going to go with Outer Worlds. Ongoing game awarded to a game for outstanding development on the ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. Oh, oh God, give me a break. Fortnite is probably going to win this one, and I say that because of Season 2. I'm even going to vote for Fortnite because of Season 2 and everything that they've changed in the game. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege is... Give me a break. Apex, it's, it's, it's Fortnite, but not Fortnite. Um, they have done some changes, they've done some fixes, they've done some more characters, they've done more designs and things like that, but Fortnite Season 2 really set the standards for hyping things up for a big change to a ongoing game with things like that. Destiny 2, give me a break. So Fortnite. 
performance awarded to an individual for voice over um, acting motion and or uh, performing capture well crap you you realize how hard this one is so parvati is going to be loved by people who played in um Outer, Outer Worlds. People like Brevardi. People like the little story that she has. Remember, it's it's a difference between her script and everything and the actual acting, the voice acting, you know, motion and, and whatnot. Um, so while she did good voiceover acting, it was kind of adorable. No. For Courtney Hope. You're a ginger. I love you. You're beautiful. But no, I'm sorry, okay? I like the look you're giving me right now. But uh, I'm sorry, no. Gear 5, no. Um, <sighs> Matthew, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you little, you little geeky guy. I love you. But no. Yep, we're down to two. Mads and Norman, both fantastic job with the voice acting, both with the motion capture. They did it all. They did it all. However, Mads, I love you. You know I love you, right? But Norman, you kind of grow more attached to through the playthroughs, through the story, through the bonding. Mads is throughout, you know, the thing. And, you know, Mads is Mads, but Norman, baby, you're bringing it home, man. You're bringing it home. Role-playing game. For the best game design with rich player character customization and progress, including massively multiplayer experiences. <sighs> Sorry, Kingdom Hearts. Which is really weird. Kingdom Hearts is really not on any other list here. Monster Hunter is a no when I think role playing game, I think something that I get into, that I that I get to do things and decide things and whatnot, and it makes a difference. For me, role playing game is exactly that. It's things where I get to make a difference. Final Fantasy gives you the illusion of difference. However, it does not really give you a role playing perspective. And it, yes, it has you know customization and progress, and yes, it has the MMO experience. But you think role playing game. Um, it's, it's just, uh, Final Fantasy XIV, I know it's got a, a decent chunk of following now that I'm sure we're all gonna vote for that, but, long story short, no. Kingdom Hearts is less out of all this. Um, which is really weird, it's not on the Game of the Year or thing, but, alright, whatever. I don't even know it was on last year's. So that's what kind of gives me a gripe of Pokemon Sword and Shield as well as Fallen Orders. They're not even gonna be on next year's list. Disco Elysium is a game that, uh... I'm seeing it pop up a little more. I'm, I'm seeing it, you know, it, it's it's getting some recognition, but uh, no. So again, role playing, um, massively multiplayer experience is what is going to hurt Outer Worlds in this category. However, the progression, the customization, um, you know, it it was done a hell of a lot better than any of these other games. Now, if you were just to go on those two things, then Kingdom Hearts is thrown back into the mix with the swords and the abilities and things like that, which really I had a little bit more fun with versus Outer Worlds. Um, but again, it also throws me into immersing yourself in the game world, role-playing, making things make a difference. So Outer Worlds gets my vote. Score and music. <sighs> Sorry. Not even gonna, not even gonna hesitate on this one. Death Stranding. No offense. Like all these other ones, decent. Go check out Death Stranding's music. The, the just, it was fantastic. Um, sports and racing games. <laughs> oh god. I'm just gonna throw this out there based on what I grew up on, and none of these have interested me. I'm sorry. It's, it takes a lot to sell me on a sports and racing game, because it's, it's becoming more. And more included in a lot of other games for sports and racing. You take GTA 5 right now. Sports and racing are in it. It's a big function of it. And, and it deserves more on-air than, 
than than some of these that I'm not even interested in. I'm going to go with Crash because I love Crash. Strategy game, best game focused on real-time or turn-based strategy gameplay in respect of a platform, which just, you might as well remove that. Uh, War Groove. Tropico 6. What? Um, so strategy game, turn-based. <sighs> Noni! Anno 1800. I have no, lo I have no, I have no hesitation. VR AR game. <sighs> this one's a tough one. Trovers, no. Blooded in Truth, no. Asgard's Wrath, no. It's going to be Beat Sabers or No Man's Sky. This one's a really tough one. I feel like, like with No Man's Sky, like Beat Sabers gets out there a little bit more because of memes, because of TikTok, because of like smaller vignettes versus actually watching someone do Beat Saber. It's okay, but it's 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 niche. No Man's Sky VR, especially with all the changes and everything they've done. And and how much respect that Hello Games deserves for what they've done with with No Man's Sky, which why why after the massive update this summer that No Man's Sky was not on the list for best ongoing game, especially figuring how much some of these journalists that were the jury to get these listed on here blows my mind why no man's sky is not on this on the list for uh, ongoing condemn because it would have got it would have won hands down um however for the vr and ar games no man's sky wins it and that is it that is it that is the end of the categories folks that is the end of the voting so uh pretty much i believe we voted for everything except for one category which let's go back up to that category real quick real fast I believe there was a category or did I actually vote in all of them oh I think I voted in all of them okay then without further ado let me know are you going to partake in this are you voting do you just say no what let me know Do you disagree with me let me know um remember that if you did enjoy the content remember to like share and subscribe head down description below links to social media discord if you like to support me and my content and without further ado thank you all for watching i hope you and i if we if we disagree that's fine that is opinionated this is my opinions on what some of these good games are and what deserves the game awards um who deserves the game awards and um you know if you disagreed let me know down below um, whether you agreed or disagreed and we can agree to disagree as well. Let me know your perspective though. So. Without further ado, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next Locums Loco show.